Hey guys, okay, I looted everything that I could and I couldn't find any data points or anything. It's telling me to go here. Obviously, we'll go there, but give me a moment. I haven't really explored this. <laughs> a vending machine. Structural failure prevents access. Right, obviously, we can't go through there. So, anyway, let's keep going. Whoa, uh, whoa, sorry, guys. It Doesn't that look like what you're finding a cauldron? <laughs> sorry, I'm just, just stunned. Guys, this is a cauldron. Or early, an early cauldron. All right, anyway, data points. I must have them. Let me put this down. We'll come back for it. Hello, I'm Margot Shen, and this is Hephaestus. As the name might tip you off, this is going to be the subordinate function that Gaia will use to make lots and lots of robots. Her personal forge. Except, it's not that simple. Um, so like, you probably noticed that only about a third of you are robotics engineers. The rest, experts in machine cognition, virtual heuristics, that stuff. Well, that's because we aren't going to be the ones designing and building robots. The last thing we want is to burden Gaia with a bunch of outmoded 21st century designs. A waste of time. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots. And not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose, designed and fabricated at a snap of a finger. Hers. Her finger. So, Hephaestus isn't really the forge. It's more like the knowledge of craft and ingenuity of a master smith to wield the hammer. Encoded as software. Virtual creativity made real. Gaia's already learning. In simulation, she's doing some very creative things with fractal assembly and animal morphologies. Her designs aren't about to win the Liam Prize anytime soon. But hey, everyone has to start somewhere. So, yes. Time to get started. Let's do this. I don't get it. Which part? It's a little technical in places. If Gaia was designed to save life, why would the robots it makes attack people? Perhaps it loves some forms of life more than others. The derangement. The machines weren't always so angry. True. Mostly they were docile until 10, 15 years ago. For years, Hephaestus has been forcing cauldrons to make aggressive machines. I've seen it myself, in the cauldrons. Stalkers, ravagers, a thunderjaw. How could it do that? And why? Why indeed. But this is nuts. Okay, you know that stuff about... Sorry, there's a lot to go through, but... You know that stuff about animal morphologies? That's why all of these robots are made to to be like animals like gazelles and obviously but not ravages and stuff isn't that is that in the recent times uh what i mean is the aggressive machines <laughs> Guys, there's so much here i'm just super confused about certain things i'm astounded by and i'm like wow that is amazing and it makes sense and then i'm stumped again because why why were the machines turning aggressive but anyway, this is an early cauldron. Simulation results. Okay, I was okay. Something to read. That's Margot Shen. Oh no, am I missing a couple? Shit! God damn it, guys. <laughs> All right. Anyway, right from Margot Shen to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject: Simulation results. Wow, you weren't kidding about guys. Predilection for animal morphologies. Sure, not totally unexpected given the rough natural terrain her bots will have to navigate. But I agree that there's some something deeper going on here. Her designs aren't just functional. They feel almost like, well, tributes is the word that comes to mind. As though she's already mourning their loss. Oh god, that is that is nuts. And not just for the disappearing fauna of our time, but creatures from the fossil record too. That's why some look like dinosaurs, some look like, um, you, you know, um, post-dinosaur -ex uh, extinction mammals. 
<laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts, guys. References to megafauna in some some of her designs. So cool. Well, whatever guy thinks up, Hephaestus will empower her to build it. I just wish we could still be around in a century or two to see what she makes. Margot. Wow, guys. All right, let's have a look at this closely. Oh, can you move, Aloy? Stop it. <laughs> All right. All right, give me a second. Oh, my God, guys. Guys, she's getting on my nerves. <laughs> Sorry, Aloy. I love you, but you keep getting on my nerves. All right, here we go. Right, full steam ahead. Okay, Margo. If I've... If I doubted your brilliance in the slightest, I wouldn't have picked you as the Hephaestus Alpha. Sorry, uh, from Elizabeth Sobek to Margot Shen. Full steam ahead. You need to stop worrying about your age and communication style. So she's a bit insecure. You are who you are. Have confidence in yourself. You know what you're doing. Case in point, the latest draft of your plan for the uh, construction and stocking of bootstrap silos to store raw materials is excellent. This combined with your design for the AM Foundry core and the Foundry site selection plan add up to a comprehensive plan. It's time to start construction. One detail, consult with uh, I am Midi Okilo before you finalize the silo inventories. Hephaestus' first task will be to fabricate the robots that will construct the waveform broadcast towers Minerva, which will use to transmit deactivation codes. So any exotic materials needed for the towers should be accounted for in the inventory plan, Elizabeth. So they had to keep all the building materials in in silos basically so that when when everyone was uh, dead everyone was gone and it was just the robots left Hephaestus will build robots to build a tower to deactivate the Pharaoh Plague guys I need a drink honestly <laughs> this, this is stunning sci-fi throughout this episode I've just had full chills okay so um Please, there has to be more, and I'm missing two thingies, which is really pissing me off, actually. Oh, all right, whatever. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay. I'm constantly checking the minimap for any data points or anything. I've seen these shapes before in cauldrons. See! But of course, the birthing places of Gaia's machines. All right, so. Now, there's nothing else here, guys. I'm sorry if I missed anything. Please let me know in the comments if there was anything in this room. Uh, Timestamp it. I'll, you know, reference it. I'll try and find it off recording. Wait, anything here? This is just fascinating. <laughs> with capital letters. Okay, what now? What is this? Oh, I forgot my Deathbringer gun. God damn it. Wait, 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 check. God damn it. All right, go to, uh, sorry, find the entrance to Sobek's office. Right, we're above where we got attacked. Okay, I get it. Gotcha. Right, there's more data points in here. I think this is it. Elizabeth Sobek's office. But it, it's sealed off. Oh, great. There's got to be a way inside. Keep looking. More eclipse. Shit. No. All right, guys. I tell you what, I'm going to time skip ahead. Let me get my gun. Hey guys, I am back. Okay, there's a shit ton of them. But I've got a surprise wait for them. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a backpack dude which I would love to explode. Right, there's a dude here. Dude here. Uh can they actually see me? I'm still in kind of like a corridor thing. 
Okay, guys. Anyway. But what is this place, though? Guys, where the hell are we? <laughs> Where's this taking me? Oh, please, is there stairs here? There is, there is. Excellent. Okay, cool. We're good. Oh, there's a, there's two data points. Welcome to Apollo. The collective memory of the human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. I am Samina Ebaji. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory Institute in New Tehran. As a heritage professional, I devoted my career to the preservation of human knowledge, creative endeavor, and cultural achievement. Apollo is, therefore, the ultimate embodiment of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before us are immense. Specifically, we will have to design and implement four major initiatives simultaneously. First, the construction of data repositories in cradle facilities around the world ensuring redundancy. Second, the collection and processing of a projected 180 million discrete data entries. 42 zettabytes of data in Mandarin, English, Spanish and Arabic. Third, the transferal and encoding of all that data onto DNA encapsulated in synthetic fossils. The only medium capacious and durable enough to safeguard it without degradation for the centuries to come. And last, but not least, the development of the holographic interface and gamified curricula, by which future humans will commune with Apollo, progressively unlocking heuristic learning modules, leveling up their knowledge and skills they will need to take control of the terraforming system. That is the future towards which all of our efforts will be directed. Not just the preservation of the past, but the seed for the flourishing of a new tree of knowledge. Welcome, and let us begin. Well, what happened though? Why are we tribal? <laughs> See, there's more mystery here. It's ridiculous. That was very interesting about the DNA encapsulated thingies um, to store information. That's crazy. Right. Enca oh, okay, good. <laughs> it's going to explain it. Encapsulate DNA. All right, good, good. All right, let's read this. From Samina Ebaji to Elizabeth Sobek, Encapsulate DNA. And the winner is Encapsulate DNA. Over the past 10 days, I performed an exhaustive review of data storage solutions, magnetic, optical, quantum, even that eternity tech that FAS was shilling a year or so ago. But every other solution has one or more fatal sh uh, shortcomings. Too heavy to transport, too massive to install in the allotted space, too power intensive over the centuries, too prone to failure past 300 to 400 years, etc. Encapsulated DNA will easily hold the 40 plus zettabytes. I've never heard of that. I wonder how much that is. 40 plus zettabytes we're projecting for Apollo. There are still many details to finalize, of course. To start with, we need to select the inert material in which we'll embeds the mo molecules already testing 16 candidate materials as well as design and fabricate the power systems and sealed reliquaries that will keep the dna at minus 18 degrees celsius for 1000 plus years so long as i assure you that it didn't factor into my decision may i confess that i deem it entirely fitting indeed propitious that we will be using the very building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge from mechanized extinction it's not just it's not just ironic but heroic life as the hero beating back the forces of oblivion in any case much to do until next time peace be with you samina 
Guys, this is nuts. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, no, wait, there's another thing. Can you see it? Another um, data point. we got to get that. Can I not enter here? All right, no. All right, that's fine. Oh, there's another thing here. Sorry. Right, Apollo updates. Text mail uh, Samina to... Wait, one sec. Oh, good. That's <laughs> that's uh, completed the missing ones. All right, good. To Elizabeth Sobek, uh, subject Apollo update. Over the past two months, the full benefit of our procurement of a copy of the Homer <laughs> archive from Far Zenith has made itself known. And as a result, all of Apollo's key deliverables are on schedule. Apollo has already surpassed 40 million discrete data entries and continues to grow. The physical science modules are effectively complete, with soft science modules close behind. World history, cultural data and media archives are also on schedule. Language uh, preservation is wrapping up a bit ahead of schedule due to the falling short of our goal to preserve 4,500 languages. I suppose the tragic early loss of Pap Papua New Guinea doomed that goal from the outset. Oh dear. With attendant curricula development about to begin. Speaking of the heuristic curricula, they are performing well in testing, with children and adolescents demonstrating high levels of engagement with and trust in the Aristotle Aristotle and Aspasia pers Personae. Personally, I find them highly engaging, especially when they debate. I wish half my professors had been so entertaining. Peace be with you, Samina. All right. All right, anything else? Come on, give me some more. I wouldn't mind some voice recordings to listen to. I'm a bit tired of reading. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. All right, guys. What are we doing? Guns blazing? Right, there's a skull... Oh, oh, no, there's a window here. No, there isn't. I made a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> Say a lot to my little friend. Oh, crap. It's coming here. Come on, who's next? Come on. Oh, my God. He dodged all my bullets. Are you kidding me? I swear, guys, I swear some of those bullets should have got him. Oh, another death ring, you guys. Okay, this one's out of ammo anyway. In what should have been a cave of wonders. Look around. See if anything is left. I swear there was another dude. Alright, whatever. Okay, guys. Um. Oh, okay, you know what? I'll do looting afterwards. Let's, let's just look for more info. These will keep. All right, there's a thing here, so we'll have a look at that. But let me just explore the room. This is so fascinating. This episode alone has just blown my mind the most out of the entire game I've played so far. I heard something. What was that? I heard something. Ah, never mind. Okay. Okay, don't want to go here yet. Let's let's go down here because there was a, a data point. Obviously, I don't want to miss anything, but let's go up here. <laughs> That's where that death bringer guy was, or sniper, or whatever. All right, check it out. A, a voice recording from uh, Harris testimonial. Stacks was unable to archive. Dr. Sobek, please archive this testimonial in Apollo. Cross reference to all mentions of my name and Operation Enduring Victory. My name is General Aaron Harris. From 2060 to 2066, I served as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff the highest-ranked officer of the United States Armed Forces. 
The tenure of my command included strategic planning and oversight of Operation Enduring Victory, a falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the United States and other nations during the last 14 months of life on this planet. Before the Pharaoh Plague, I did my job and did it well. I was bold and decisive, crafty in political maneuvers. It wasn't an accident that I rose to my position and became the commander of the largest mechanized force ever assembled. But to what end? My only lasting achievement was the extinction of life on Earth. And my one redeeming act, if any, was to delay that extinction by days or weeks, by throwing more death at it. It is my hope that there will be no need for men like me in the world to come. If you are one of the people of that future world, listening to this message, please know that I am sorry, and that I wish you well, sincerely. Aaron Harris. Shit, guys, that's crazy, man. You know what? He shouldn't... Look, it's very debatable, but he shouldn't really blame himself. I mean... Oh, I get it, though. I get it. He really feels he just sent everyone to their death. But, guys, we were going to get eaten by the robots anyway. We may as well try and fight them. I know it was under the pretense of a lie. I get it. But, hey, uh, whatever Zero Dawn did, it worked. Look, we're here. Do you see what I mean? So he shouldn't be so hard on himself. Oh gosh, I hope I'm not missing any data points. Please, I hope not. I'll be pissed off if I if I miss. I don't think we can come back here to these places, right? Anyway, guys, let's go up because I think the indicator is telling me to go there. Before that, though, is there anything here? All right, give me a sec. Let's go this way first. Is that a thing? No. um look there's loot there uh i'll yeah okay i'm gonna loot up i'm gonna time skip you're gonna find me back here hey guys we're back okay i did some looting there was nothing much to loot to be honest i only made like 50 shards <laughs> anyway here we go Welcome to Hades, Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol, the ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the, what? Just plum crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine you're Gaia 200 years from now and this new biosphere growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos, spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do. Which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocating. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. So welcome to Hades. Welcome to the Void. 
Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? I'm learning as you are, Aloy. Keep searching. Um, guys, <laughs> that was a lot. Anyway, we met Travis Tate. That's my boy. He's awesome. <laughs> All right, so he created Hades, but Hades' sole purpose was to, well, kind of, you know, reverse engineer life in case everything went wrong from Gaia's end. And then he will relinquish the extinction protocol and give it back to Gaia. Gaia will try again, etc. Right? Now, Aloy's already said it. Why does Hades wants her dead and how's it thinking and feeling you know destroy the entity and it's hide eclipse for christ's sakes do you see what i mean guys this the story is just getting crazier and crazier anyway right noise complaints okay right what's this about uh from travis tate to elizabeth sobeck subject noise complaints color me confounded lizzie <laughs> lizzie <laughs> bashcore anyone who says the old tt codes to bashcore is straight up lying and you know it old trav don't have no truck with commercialized razzle daz nah -uh. <laughs> heck i'd rather guzzle elite of ceterum Cita rum, cita rum. I don't know, whatever. Run off, then listen to Grey Swarm for 30 seconds. Hand to God and swear on my mama's grave. And she was religious. Nah. <laughs> that ain't Bash called blasting the Hades lab, shaking the walls, rattling folks' teeth. It's death metal, girl. <laughs> Classical music. 80s and 90s mostly see this is why i love travis he's awesome man got me some dutch deathcore some japanese gore grind <laughs> some swedish cannibal themed stuff too stop by if you want to listen oh heck just come within 50 meters of the lab ain't no bash call you'll see or hear rather in that screech that rends the air and feel in the throbbing pulse of the floor and walls and ceiling swallowing up like you was jonah trapped in the gullet of gothic death fish hallelujah <laughs> no hallelujah <laughs> as for those requests to turn it down no can do lizzie this is how i code turn down my death metal might as well give up stimulants chocolate malts and industrial accident vids Last I heard, we were supposed to be coding Hades down here. Am I really supposed to code an extinction protocol without death metal to inspire me? No, no. I don't think so. Stay cool. Trav. <laughs> wow. Wish he was still alive, guys. Um, is that the twist? Are all of these guys still alive behind that gate at Mother's Embrace or whatever? Hmm anyway hades protocol okay so this is the explanation now right tate here just popped three blues but i earned it <laughs> okay what is that finally figured out a goldilocks solution to guys rather extreme executive authority if they ain't worth 10 to 12 hours of dream time what is before this every usurpation protocol i designed failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft too hard and it degraded the gaia core sure it pried it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so hades could take control but by breaking her fingers sometimes her arms too so that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Guy taking control back after Hades has done its business. So how to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for the wear. Too soft and Gaia only pretended to relinquish control. <laughs> In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operations, only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re-reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Are you kidding me? Sneaky. You're damn right. That's crazy, guys. I swear, ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going. 
even when it's just simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, uh, preserving its integrity then unseat it from command position so Hades can slip into the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Um, those blues are coming on strong now, so I'm not really describing it so clear, but pretty sure it'll work. Yeah, those blues are plenty strong. Guess it's time to sleep and bed. I'll be, I'll back to it tomorrow. Alligators. Yeah, he's uh, he's high as a kite. <laughs> that is insane, guys. I I'm loving this so much. All right, there must be more. Come on, come on. All right. Oh, there is one. This one here. Okay, check it out. Archive abuse. All right, from Samina Abaji, Travis to Travis Tate, CC Elizabeth Sobek, archive abuse. Mr. Tate, this mail concerns Apollo archive submission hashtag 00002387. Your triple six submission in just five days and oh what a doozy despite earlier uh, warnings re inappropriate materials you chose to submit 265 holographic remasters of acknowledged classics of extreme exploitation cinema allow me then to thank you on two counts number one for giving me the pleasure of rejecting your submission thereby consigning your favourite Eastern European torture flicks and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. It truly warms my heart to know that I have saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 instalments of Make a Millipede. <laughs> Don't worry, the Pasolini material has already been preserved. Extreme perhaps, but art. <laughs> Number two, for clarifying a concept that has so long been ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself, the definition of obscenity, obscenity, you have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in Judge Potter's famous utterance. I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis Tate submitted it, it's obscene. Accordingly, I have directed Apollo staff to summarily reject all of your future submissions sites unseen. Perhaps you might invest the time you would you would have spent preparing further submissions on oh, I don't know, your assigned work? We have a well to save after all, or the rest of us do anyway. Dr. Samina Abadji. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, guys. Uh Wait, isn't that the same one I just read? Yeah, it is. Just flagged up again. Okay, cool. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> Guys, let me know in the comments, though, if I have missed anything. And I'm really sad because I haven't found a power cell yet, so... Looks like the only way onwards. Okay. Where the hell are we? Hope this is correct. Welcome to Eleuthia. Jesus, that scared me. ...and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances. But, as one of the authors of the Accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. No, 
Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development, all of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So, si vous êtes prêt, let us begin. That's insane, guys. Is this where humans were artificially created, or the proposal of it anyway? Wow, uh, my mind is blown. My mind is blown, guys. It really is. Anyway, let's look around. Oh, there's a thing here. Uh, FZ Chambers? All right, check it out. Patrick Brochard Klein to Elizabeth Sobek. Uh, FZ same, uh, Chambers. What does that stand for? Uh, the Actogenic Chambers arrived two days ago. I've spent the last 36 hours examining them and poring over technical documentation. They're a revelation. Astonishing. I don't know what you had to give. Oh, Far Zenith. That's what FZ sounded for. Sorry. In America, you call it FZ, but I'm British. Whatever. <laughs> so Far Zenith in trade to get these chambers, but it was worth it. In a single leap, their um, embryologists have vaulted past 50 years of technological shortcomings. The risks of ECMO resolved, don't know what that is, nutrition delivery resolved, hormonal stability resolved, 12 other risk areas resolved. Before I examine these chambers, I consider the Odyssey to be a fool's errand, but if the rest of um, Farzina's technology is at this level, well... A human colony around Sirius doesn't seem so impossible after all. Wait, did, is that where they went, guys? They, they did... No, but I thought the project failed. Am I getting that mixed up? Anyway, whatever. Sorry, sorry. Mass fabrication of the chambers will present a number of challenges, but I'm confident they can be resolved. I'm going to rest for a few hours, then get back to it. Expect a fabrication plan within 48 hours. PBK. No, I think they did take off. I'm sure they were in um, the Odyssey or whatever. No, they abandoned it. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm confused. I am. I'm so sorry. Maybe I'm misremembering. But no, the reason I bring this up is perhaps... Maybe there's humans on another planet, perhaps. I don't know. So these are the chambers, and this is how... And it's got pharaoh on it jesus <laughs> all right so um this is where humans you know from baby to adult i don't know were created is that correct yeah look check it out are these what i what i think they are artificial wombs see machines to spawn a new generation of human beings Guys, this is insane. Oh, my God. Right, Cradle Servitor per Personae. I don't know what that means. Okay. Right, from Patrick Brochard Klein to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, Cradle Servitor Personae. Development of the artificial personae for Cradle Servitors. So, are, what, are they robots? Nurturer, disciplinarian, healer. Continues at a good Hey, so it is a robot. We are targeting Turing. That's Alan Turing, isn't it? Uh, 0 0.4 for these contracts. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> this should allow low-grade empathy and limited improvisation without undermining adherence to codified behavior sets. The stimulus-driven switching of personae, however, is proving to be a greater software challenge than anticipated, especially concerning our entrenched feedback loops between the disciplinarian and healer personae. I've also attached a report from an incident where a servitor running the mother personae intervened on a disciplinarian servitor's behavior. Are you kidding me? A parental argument, if you will. <laughs> Amusing on first glance, perhaps, but deeply concerning. 
I have attached a comprehensive plan for correcting these interactive protocol shortcomings in just data corrupted. So they obviously had to create robots still, but it was just to look after babies, right? Guys, this is blowing my freaking mind. God damn it, man. My brain is going to be mush by the end of this. Uh, by the way, I may have to split this episode into two parts because it's it's a very long chapter, which I'm very happy about, but still. Cradle sealed. Right, from Patrick Brochard Klein to Elizabeth Sobeck. Cradle sealed. Eleuthia um, 01 was successfully sealed before the swarm advancing across Xi Jiang. Am I sorry? Apologies if I'm not uh, pronouncing that correct correctly. Xijiang Province could detect it. Wait, sealed before the swarm advancing across. Blah blah blah. Province could detect it. How would they detect anything? Anyway, ping back from crucial systems is good. For our maiden voyage, a success. Regards, my disputes with the betas over zygote selection. Of course, I understand we have limited overhead to run simula simulations of gene flow in our future humans, but we can all agree there is margin for refinement in future cradle populations. Uh, uh, D-O-N-C donk, I don't know what that means. Um, in addition to personally overseeing completion of the Eleuthia uh, 02 site in inside uh, Mount Namuli, I will formulate and propose a modified zygote selection plan within the week. PBK. <laughs> Guys, this is insane. Do you know what this reminds me of as well? Sorry, just randomly. Do you remember if any of you are old enough to have watched Alien by Ridley Scott? You know when they emerge, John Hurt, Sigourney Weaver, etc. They emerge from that... Um, hibernation thingy it just looks like that i just thought i'd say it and if you don't know what i'm talking about fuck you no i'm joking <laughs> i'm only messing guys okay let's get out of this so we need to go up the stairs i guess however just give me a second i don't want to miss anything so that's the wound that's the uh hologram and there's nothing else just checking please no more eclipse just leave me alone eclipse All right. Okay, what's this? Facilities. Elizabeth said a, a new generation of humans would be spawned inside such places. She did. All oh, Mother Mountain. It was one of them? There's only one way to be sure. The hatch wouldn't open. Something, something about a corrupted alpha registry. I need to search Elizabeth's office. All right, guys. Wait, what's this? No, nothing here. It's just supplies. All right, let's keep going. I'm just uh, being on the lookout for Eclipse. They just suddenly appear out of nowhere. Okay, nothing else here. <laughs> okay, that's. I uh, thought that was a bottomless pit. All right, here we go, guys. I don't want to miss any hidden ladders. No, there's nothing here. All right, just here. All right, we need to go there, but is there anything here? Perhaps. No, nothing. Okay. Why am I so nervous? <laughs> I'm so nervous. What is this? Oh, there's loads of data points here, guys. Okay, where do I start even? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Right, what is that? Us would benefit from antelope and morphologies. Though capric forms show superior load-bearing capability. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the quaternary extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Gaia? Looks like it used to be Logically be speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet... And yet... 
I find the loss of megafaunal species unaccountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion causes me to experience a grief that is difficult to describe. Am I malfunctioning? No, no, Gaia, you're not. This is good. It's very good. Holy crap, guys. That's insane. Okay, I get it. So she's designing... Let me... St Look, I don't know how to wear this. Forgive me. I apologize if I, if I don't make any sense. She's creating robots. I don't... Look, I don't know what the hell this thing is, right? But she was talking about megafauna. Um, look, I watch a lot of those documentaries, um, dinosaurs, and, you know, when dinosaurs went extinct... You know, the mammals rose up. So there was a megafauna. Um, I don't know the names. Forgive me. But there's some really big mammals out there, right? They they can... Behemoth. So, okay. So she's basically creating robots that resemble these um, animals in prehistory because she feels sad that they went extinct. That's insane, guys. So she can feel... So Gaia has emotions and empathy. That, that's what I'm getting from it. If I'm totally wrong about this, guys, just tell me. But I'm right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't know. Anyway, what's this? Right. Um, you will undergo a brief oh. period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime and final statement. Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? When you're back up and running at the new site, we'll bring the subordinate functions online and see where we stand. Elizabeth, I detect distress. Are you all right? I'm fine. I realize that circumstances compel us to launch earlier than we hoped, but all subsystems are operational. The odds stand in our favor. But what if... Guy, there's nothing left out there. You can't even survive unless you're wearing an environmental suit. There are billions dead in fear and agony... What if... What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. In you, all things... Hey! Oh, okay. Wow, that is so sad, guys. <sighs> anyway oh that's awful imagine this really happened oh do i want to go in here no no not yet guys not yet i want to look for every everything right we check this side out we need to go this way now so what happened to gaia i mean look guys i'm just gonna tell you straight i thought um all mother was elizabeth sobek it could still be, it could be, but I think it's actually Gaia. You know, uh, anyway, sorry guys, um, right. Pure logic oh. won't cut it, Ted. To pull this off, Gaia's going to need to have some skin in the game. It has to care. What if it runs amok? Have we learned nothing from our mistakes? Your mistake, fuck you. All I'm saying is give it a kill switch. She was just born, Ted. I'm not going to put a gun to her head while she's still in the cradle. You talk like it's a child. What if it becomes a monster? Elizabeth, Fuck you. May I speak outside protocol? Oh, jeez, that scared me. Sorry. <laughs> of course, Gaia. Go on. I'm sorry to contradict you, but Mr. Pharaoh's argument is sound. At this point, the development of my psyche is not entirely predictable. To ensure preservation of life, a hardwired override is, I believe, a necessary safeguard. There. Satisfied, Ted? Jeez, let's just do what it says. <sighs> Ted Farrah, seriously, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I really hate that dude, guys, honestly. And the way he talks, like, he's got a leg to stand on. He's wiped out, not just, not just people, I mean, like, freaking molecular life as well. Jesus, what a dickhead. Well done, Ted. Well done. 
Um, right, there doesn't seem to be anything else here, I don't think. Unless um, I'm not looking correctly. No, that's pretty much it, I think. Okay, so that's where we came in from, and there was that little door thing here. Pry open. Yes, there's more things to listen to. Good, 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 good. Okay, one second. Oh, that's nice. Very generous. Wait, why can I... Oh, one second, guys. Right, what can I get rid of? No, I can carry this. What the hell? Oh, it's just potions. I, I'm so sorry. I thought that was blue. I thought it was a blue item. Anyway. All right, guys, here we go. It's two data points. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, guys. Odyssey has failed. I was right. Oh, dear. Okay. From Elizabeth Sobek to all alphas. Subject, Odyssey has failed. All some terrible news i'm afraid far zenith has informed me that the odyssey mission has failed last night a telemetry indicated a catastrophic antimatter containment failure as the drive spun up to depart the solar system the ship its crew its cargo of zygotes and seeds its alpha build of apollo all were lost that sucks Zero Dawn is now the only hope for the continuation of the human species and earthly life. We must succeed, Elizabeth. Oh, that's awful, guys. <laughs> like, no pressure, you know? There's another one. There's another one. Check it out. I know it's telling me to go here, but I don't want to do that right now. Artemis? What's that? Okay. Okay. Right, from Charles Runson to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, Artemis status. It's coming along, Liz. I'm positive about it. If those words can still mean anything. Had my sleeves rolled up negotiating with frozen zoos for their samples. So many species trapped in ghoulish hologram dioramas. Suspended in what-ifs. More than 14,000 that went extinct between 2000 and 2043. So I'm trying to move this. Okay. We've started mapping out primary succession, selecting the pioneer organisms for a balanced and sustainable biosphere. Microorganisms and insects, rabbits and hawks, foxes and wolves. I've never seen any wolves, guys. Thousands more that will have to wait their turn until our new generation can be entrusted with the duty of restoring them so that they can so that they can return to a world that this time will understand the concept of conservation before it's too late so are there still zygotes of other animals is that what they're saying there's already been too many too late we've lost a whole collection team during the swarm breakthrough in Myanmar the samples we lost were well irreplaceable but thanks to you, Liz, the circle of life will bend, not break. The earth was a lifeless rock before, and someday it will be again. But not now, not like this, not on our watch, Ronson. So, I guess not all of the animals, they could get their genetic material to re, you know, repopulate the earth with... Uh, what I'm trying to say is, not all animals made it. Guys, like I said in a previous episode, I don't remember which one, but I've never seen any cats or dogs. Just foxes and stuff. Wait, what's this? Oh, nothing. All right. Okay, please, I hope I'm not missing out on anything. No, I think we're good. All right, guys, let's grab this, whatever this is. The Alpha Registry Master File. Intact? Yeah. No signs of corruption. Then what are you waiting for? Copy the file. With this, I can restore the registry at the hatch inside All Mother. Yes! Open it. Go inside. And grasp the secrets within. Where I was born. Maybe. Maybe who gave birth to me. Who? Are you really so naive? There will be no who waiting for you there, Aloy. Whatever birthed you into the world was a what, not a who. You bastard. 
Oh, no, I had a legitimate birth. It's you, Aloy, who are the creation of a machine. But what kind of machine and why? Why were you created? Oh, no, what's this? Eclipse. Oh, great. You need to get out of there. What you found is too valuable. You're too valuable. Come on, come on. Fuck off, you're kidding. Oh, shit. No! Oh, my God, guys, are you kidding me? suitable death in mind for you child <laughs> shit what do we do 